Hey guys, it's Elena, and for today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this wave in Procreate on my iPad using my amazing alcohol ink brushes, which I will link to down below. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with one of my color changing brushes, color changing number two, and choosing from my Ranger uh, palette, I'm choosing a light blue color. I'm just going to add a little bit of alcohol ink uh, pattern to make it sort of look like sea spray. And I do apologize for the lighting in this video. I made it at night because my kids were asleep, so it was good timing. But um, yeah, it's it's a little bit faded out in, in certain places, so I apologize for that. I'm still looking for the um, optimal lighting setup. So it's a bit hard to see at this point, but I've chosen a brush called Circle Dropper Thick Brush Stroke. And with my blue color, I am just sort of going around in circles, sort of a wave, and sort of a wave shape. And I'm just going over and over on that spot. And sometimes this brush can be a bit unpredictable. If you've seen my ribbon tutorial, I will be using some of the same effects that I show in the ribbon tutorial, so I'll put a link for that above um, the video at this point. But um, basically I'm choosing a couple different shades of blue and green, and I'm just going over and over again in the same spot. And if I don't like how one brush stroke looks, I will just undo it and do it again. And so now I'm switching to my brush called Blended Brush Stroke and doing the same thing, just sort of reinforcing that wave shape. And I'm just switching around um, between different blues and greens in my Copic BG Swatches palette, which comes with the brush set. Um, I really like a lot of these colors. They're probably my favorites. Sometimes the blended brush stroke can come out um, in interesting ways, sometimes in weird ways, sometimes in, in good ways. So as in the ribbon tutorial, um, undo is your friend if something doesn't turn out how you expected it to. But I think it works really well for the wave look because it sort of can drag a little bit uh, like a darker ink on one side and then a lighter on another side and that can look a lot like water to me. So I'm just continuing with this pattern, this wave pattern. I'm still using the blended brush stroke at this point and just seeing where it takes me. And at some point with this brush, you will start not even having to change colors that much because it will sort of pick up a different color depending on where you start. So now I'm gonna go with the Ink Pool Edger brush to add a couple of more harsh looking lines. And I'm not gonna use this one all that much, just a little bit to add a little bit of interest. So now I'm going with the flat inker, sorry, the pressure inker. I changed my mind. And I'm going to choose a darker color, a darker blue, because I want to, um, I want to sort of imitate the shadows in the wave. So I'm going to add some, some darker color to um, the top of the wave and the bottom of the wave just to give it a bit more varied color and make it look a bit more realistic even though I'm not really going for realistic at all in this and it's very abstract but just to make it a bit more wave-like I'm adding some darker color here and there with this pressure inker brush. So now I'm going to use the hair dryer brush which is a blender brush and I'm just going to 
sort of add a little bit more texture to certain areas. So I'm just adding a bit of texture. So I'm still working with the heat gun brush and I'm just adding a little bit of texture, especially along the top of the wave where I've put these darker colors. And I'm just sort of making it a bit more organic looking using these blender brushes. And I realized after, uh, when I got to the end of this, I realized that I actually should have gone and used my uh, heavy bleed blender brush as well at this stage of the of the painting but actually I went and did it towards the end um, if I could go back and do it I would I would do the blender brush all the blender brushes at this stage so now I am choosing the mister brush and I wanted to add some sort of sea mist looking stuff. This is a great brush for water. So at this point I was not actually happy with the shape of the wave. I'm not like I'm not really good at, at illustrating or like coming up with a really realistic looking shape so I kind of wanted to go back over it with the blended brush stroke a few more times just to try and shape the wave a little bit more to a shape that I was happy with. So now I'm going back to the heat gun and add a bit more organic look to these brush strokes that I just made. So you can see that this project is very much about layering brush strokes on top of each other, adding organic look with the different blender brushes and then doing it again. So now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and select my mister again. The mister is really good for adding this these sort of splatters that look a lot like sea mist to me. So a little bit of this brush goes a long way. You can just do a sort of very small circular motion with it and it will sort of spray outward from there. And if you push too hard it can go quite large so I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this. And you see I went a bit overboard with this quite a few times and I had to go back and undo and try again. I'm keeping all of my undos in here rather than editing them out because I do really want you to see how much I actually use <laughs> the undo button. So now I'm using my color splatter brush and tapping it on the screen to get a few more bigger dots in a couple different lighter colors. And this one is my static brush stroke. I'm just adding another stroke over top of the wave just for a bit more interest. And the static brush stroke is different than the blended brush stroke because it does not pick up color from where you are drawing. So I like to use it for accents. It's easier to control the color with the static brush stroke which is why um, I just chose it to add a couple of extra lines on the very top lighter color. So 
So now I'm taking the hair dryer brush again, adding a bit more texture once again. Now I'm choosing the heat gun and I'm going to add some dark edges along the bottom as well. I wanted to add some shapes that sort of look a bit like bubbles. So I'm taking the heat gun into a circular motion to create these circular shapes. With the heat gun you can change direction if you're not happy with how it's looking. Sometimes just changing direction without even lifting the stylus can make a huge difference. So now I'm switching to my circle dropper again and I'm going to choose a color and then add some drops, some circles, which are very characteristic of alcohol ink. And to do that, I just put the pen on the paper on the, the screen. Oops, that one was much too big. So I just put the pen on the screen and make very, very small circular motions. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some white using the white splatter just to make it look a little bit messier, a little bit more like water and bubbles and spray. So now I'm choosing the dense splatter brush and that was much too big so I'm taking it a bit smaller to add even more spray to this wave. Just a little bit here and there, not a lot. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my metallics and I've added a new layer which is very important with the metallics. Always add a new layer before adding metallics otherwise it all just looks white. So with the gold color selected I'm just going to go ahead and start adding some metallic splatters to the same areas where I have added a lot of the sea spray effect, all the splatters etc. I feel like the gold is going to look especially good on top of that where it naturally looks a little bit messy. And I'm sort of tracing it along a line to make it look like it's part of this wave. And you'll notice with the metallic brushes both in this, uh, the ones that are included in my Amazing Alcohol inks and also the ones that are included in Gold Rush. It gets more shiny looking if you go over the spot multiple times. It gets lighter and lighter every time. So now I'm going to do the same thing up at the top. I'm just going to sort of trace along some of these lines to make the, the, the gold sort of blend in with that. And make it look like there's like streams of gold inside of this wave.
Now I'm just going to take the eraser and get rid of some of the the gold that had sort of gone over top of this line just to make it look like it's going underneath. And I decided to go with just a few more faint lines of gold where I had drawn with the ink pool edger down below. It's always good to add the metallic over something that is either sort of messy looking or something that looks kind of darker than the rest. So I'm tracing back over that faint line and I want to add just a couple spots along the line that are a bit more glitter than the rest of the line. So I'm just doing that by sort of taking this, I get still with the um, metallic ink splatter brush, I'm, I'm just adding a bit extra in certain spots to make it look especially shiny, like it has sort of pulled up in that area. Now I'm taking the ultra fine glitter brush in the same color and sort of filling in a couple of these areas where I've already put the ink splatter just to make it a bit more pronounced. And then I decided to go ahead and take some blue and add a little bit of blue sparkle with the ultra fine glitter brush as well. For me, I think the key with this project was that I did want clean lines in parts of the wave, but other parts of the wave I wanted to be very messy with a lot of splatter and metallic. So now I decided after I'd done all of that, I decided to take my heavy bleed blender brush and add a little bit of a faded look to some of the areas and I regretted not having done this earlier before I had added all of the splatters um, so if I could go back and do it again I would have done this at the beginning but um, I was sort of making this up as I went along I had not tried to make a wave before I actually just sat down and recorded the process so um, yeah, warts and all, you've got the whole process here. So now back to the old handy hair dryer and uh, adding texture once again, just a little bit more. And back to the fine glitter just to add a tiny bit more in a greenish color this time for a bit of color variety. So that pretty much is the end of the tutorial. Um, I hope that this was helpful and if you have any questions I'm happy to answer those down below in the comments or send me a message. And um, I hope that you like the tutorial.